So we're talking about developing spiritual habits, and today I'm going to talk about an essential spiritual habit, developing the habit of prayer. Now, most of you know that uh, my dad was an alcoholic, and he got saved, and God radically changed him and our family forever. And uh, we started going to this country church. It's a big country church in North Carolina. Uh, a lot of interesting characters. Uh, we started going there when I was 10 years old. And I had no clue that people did things in church like these people did. One Sunday, uh, there was a little boy. They didn't really have a children's ministry. But there's this little boy, about four years old, sitting in the service. And he was doing what four-year-old boys do. He was cutting up. He was being loud. He was making a scene. And finally, his dad, he got on his dad's last nerve, and the dad grabbed the little boy, started marching out, holding the boy under his arm like this. And I'll never forget this. That little boy, he was going, ah, ah. Y'all pray for me now. Ah, ah. (laughs) Well, he was learning to pray as a four-year-old boy. Let let me just say this as we kind of, get into this message today. God designed you to pray. Now, I know that there are a lot of people that they're kind of intimidated by prayer. Some people don't think that they're good enough at praying. Some people don't think that they know how to pray. Some people are afraid to pray in front of others. And the reason for that is, is you feel like you don't know what to say. But if you understand what prayer really is, That's not a problem because you're not talking to the people in the room. You're talking to God. And so in learning to pray, you need to understand that God designed you to pray. Did you know that every culture in the world, as far as what anthropologists have discovered, even throughout history, every culture in the world has some form of prayer. Now, I'm not suggesting that every culture worships the one true God, And I'm certainly not suggesting that they were all followers of Jesus Christ. But what we do know is that human beings are designed to pray. Animals don't pray, but we do. And the second thing I know about prayer is that God wants you to learn to pray more effectively and to develop the habit of prayer. Now, hopefully today, I'm going to define prayer and help you understand how to develop this habit and how to do this in a way where you are closer to God. Not just feel closer to God, but you actually are closer to God because one of the reasons that God designed you to pray is to have a relationship with you. Even children can pray. Luke 11, 1, this is our launching point today. Just one verse. Now, Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he was finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Now, God doesn't want you to feel inadequate or weird about praying. If Jesus taught his disciples to pray, then you and I can learn how to pray. We also know this. If his disciples felt awkward about prayer, You're not alone if you feel weird or awkward or inadequate in your prayer. And understand this about talking to God. He loves to hear from you. I know a lot of people are like, well, it's me again, Lord. Sorry to bother you. You do not bother God when you talk to him. You do not bother God when you pray. There are others that like, well, I would pray, but God's too busy running the universe. That is a very small picture of who God is. Uh, According to Scripture, God knows even our very thoughts. He knows what you're going to think before you think it. Now, let that soak in for a minute. The truth is, God knows you better than you know yourself He desires a relationship with you. He has given us the word of God to speak to us. He has given us the spirit of God to speak to us. And he wants you to speak to him. Now, that's the greatest privilege in the world. I've never spoken to the president of the United States. Um, There have been a lot of people that I've observed 
some people I've admired that I've never been able to speak to. But above all, I get to speak every day to the God of the universe. And so learning to pray is very, very important. Now understand this, everybody can pray. You, you don't have to have the preacher to pray. Some people believe that pastors have the, the bat phone to heaven, you know, the secret hotline to heaven. But my prayers are no more effective than yours. Uh, no more than yours can be because God has designed us to pray and he wants us to hear from him. Let me give you a couple of misconceptions about prayer and then I'm gonna give you three thoughts about how we can develop the habit, the spiritual habit of prayer. Prayer is not saying fancy words to God. Prayer is communion with God. A lot of people think that because they don't know Elizabethan English, maybe they don't read Shakespeare in their spare time, they don't know how to talk like the 1611 King James Version translation of Scripture speaks, they think that if they don't know how to do that, they don't know how to talk to God. <clears throat> Understand this, and I'm not suggesting that people use thee and thou and uh, words that we don't really understand. I'm not suggesting they're not talking to God. I'm just saying that's not necessary to talk to God. What if my children, Kim and I have three adult children. What if one special occasion, they were at our house, maybe we were eating uh, dinner, maybe we were celebrating a birthday, maybe it was Christmas or Thanksgiving. What if my children began to talk to me in that way? Our most beloved earthly father, thou who propagated the Miller family and lineage, the one who gave us and provided for us sustenance as we grew up into mature adults, I beseech thee, dear father, that thou wouldest loan me 40 bucks. All right, that would be weird, would it not? That's not prayer. Prayer is not just a 911 call. Now, understand this. God does want us to call on him when we're in trouble, but not only when we're in trouble. Some of the great prayers in the Bible were prayers that were just that, calling out to God in trouble. Remember when uh, Jesus was walking on the water and Simon Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and he began to sink? He prayed a three-word prayer that was very powerful. He said, Lord, save me. Now, I'm sure he didn't say, our most beloved Jesus, thou who art the Messiah, if it is in thine will, wouldest thou reach out thine hand and keep me from drowning? No, he didn't do that. In his moment of need, he cried out, Lord, save me. And he did. Prayer is not a wrestling match or negotiation with God. Now, we do have examples of that in Scripture. Remember how Jacob wrestled with the angel of the Lord? I believe the angel of the Lord in most cases in the Old Testament was an Old Testament appearance of Jesus Christ himself. And uh, Jacob was wrestling for a blessing. Understand this. Prayer does not have to be a wrestling match. Now, sometimes prayer feels like a wrestling match if you're under great pressure or a great burden. But prayer is not a wrestling match or negotiation with God. Have you ever negotiated with God before? Especially in school. I can remember promising God that I'd be a good boy if he'd let me pass the test. Somehow or another, through the miracle of osmosis, that my mind would be illuminated as I took the test. I lay my head on the textbook and all the information would just magically appear in my brain and I would pass the test. And oh God, if you'll do that for me, even though I did not study, I pray, oh God, I will be a good boy and I promise I'll even be a missionary if you'd like. Just please let me pass this test. You ever negotiate with God? We laugh at that, but as adults, we do that as well, do we not? Prayer is not a negotiation. Prayer is not a religious ritual simply to fulfill a duty. Now, there's nothing wrong with ritualistic prayers. You can get great comfort from praying Scripture. I pray Scripture almost every day. 
Uh, you can get great comfort, and there's certainly nothing wrong with repeating the Lord's Prayer. Um, I like the old King James Version, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread as we forgive our debtors. Uh, forgive us of our debts as we forgive those indebted to us. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Beautiful. Nothing wrong with praying that. Jesus told us to pray that. But that's not only what prayer is. It is not just a religious ritual. Prayer is not driven by guilt, but by grace. Um, Hopefully you have learned that prayer is a conversation with God. And then prayer in prayer longer does not mean stronger. And I used to really struggle with this in my prayer life. I used to think that if you didn't pray an hour a day, you just weren't really right with God somehow or another. But that's simply not true. Longer does not mean stronger. Some of the most effective prayers in the Bible are very short. Example, we just said, Simon Peter, Lord save me. Uh, Read the prayer of Elijah when he called down fire from heaven. It was not very long, lasted about 60 seconds. Now, my point is this. As we learn to develop the spiritual habit of prayer, you got to learn to identify prayer for what it is. So I just want to give you three thoughts on developing the spiritual habit of prayer. And here's the first thought. You must understand that prayer is simply talking to God. That's all it is. I'm going to read to you from Matthew 6, verses 7 to 9. This is from the Sermon on the Mount. I'm going to read from the message paraphrase. It says, the world is full of so-called prayer warriors who are prayer ignorant. Isn't that true? The people that we think are the best at praying sometimes are the worst at praying because it's about them. But Jesus said they're full of formulas and programs and advice, peddling techniques for getting what you want from God. Don't fall for that nonsense. This is your father you're dealing with, and he knows better than you what you need. With a God like this loving you, you can pray very simply. So if you want to identify prayer, to be honest, many times we pray more than we think we do. Because if prayer is communion with God and God knows our thoughts, you do not even have to say the prayer out loud. In fact, I rarely pray out loud. I mostly pray in my mind. And uh, often it is with a prayer list and I'm praying through scripture and all of this stuff. And so my point is this, prayer is a simple uh, conversation with God. It's talking to God. Now, here's a couple thoughts about that. Keep it simple. You want an effective prayer life? Keep it simple. For some, it may be as simple as just starting your day with greeting God, letting him know that you love him, letting him know that you want to live for his will today. Keep it simple. And then you need to recognize your opportunities. I have to be honest, sometimes, in fact, often, I pray while I'm driving. Not because I'm that bad of a driver, but I'm literally praying, communicating with God. Um, Some of my uh, best times of prayer when I seize an opportunity like that, it's when I'm driving. Um, I listen to scripture as I'm driving. In fact, and I don't know this for a fact, but I, I believe it's probably true. I've probably listened to the entire Bible from cover to cover while I was driving. You can redeem those moments. Recognize your opportunities. You may say, well, You know, I have to get up so early in the morning to get to work. And that is true of many of you. And you have to fight traffic. Learn to seize the opportunity because sometimes you could have a very effective prayer life if you just recognize the opportunities to pray. And let's be honest. I like talk radio, uh, but talking to God is a lot better than talk radio. Talking to God is a lot better than the top 40 hits on the radio. Nothing wrong with listening to music, but seize your opportunities to pray. And then start your day with prayer. 
that is a beautiful thing to get yourself on track. When you wake up and you're late and you're automatically in a stressful situation, you're automatically panicked, do you know that the good news is you can relax and calm down. You can get in a good space if you'll simply talk to God first. When you wake up, pray before you get out of bed. Seize those opportunities. And then I would say this. Uh, we need to set a regular time for prayer. Now, it may be that some of you have the opportunity that you're able to have prayer every morning before you go to work. Or maybe it's every day when you take a break at lunch at work. Or maybe it's at night before you go to bed. I'm not, I like starting the day with it. I, I, I don't do as well at nighttime. I forget about it a lot of times, to be honest. Or I'll fall asleep. And so, nothing wrong with praying before you go to bed. The Bible says, evening, morning, and noon will I pray and cry out loud to the Lord. So it's important to pray and to recognize those opportunities. But sometimes it's good to set a regular time for prayer. If you want to be effective at it, um, maybe what you should do is before you get out of bed or before you start your day or before you even have your coffee, that, that might be sacrilegious, I'm not sure. Maybe while you're having your coffee, you can talk to God. Okay, and once again, longer does not mean stronger. Sometimes it's just a few minutes, but you begin by talking to God. Then another thing you can do is make a list. Make a list. I don't know about you, but often I will forget about some things that I want to pray about. And so I write them down. Actually, I type them in my computer. And uh, I've got a whole list of prayer requests that I pray, promises that I claim, scriptures that I pray and read to remind myself that God loves me and that he is in control. So make a list. Maybe that's a good idea for you. And then remember that God loves to hear from you. Now, some people, they're intimidated by prayer because they don't think they know how to do it. Let me ask you a question. How many of you have children? Raise your hand. All right. How many of you, your children are at least five years old? Raise your hand. All right. Now, let me ask you a question. When your children were learning to talk, did you scold them because they didn't use proper grammar? No. You loved it. You thought it was so wonderful. You thought it was so cute. I can remember um, our oldest daughter, Brittany, she would say, she would call Cheerios or any cereal. She would say Chihuahuas. Uh, Mommy, I want some Chihuahuas. Now, did I grab her by the shirt and say, you dumb child, what is wrong with you? You don't even know how to speak correctly. You're not going to get any food until you learn how to say it right. Well, of course not. That would be cruel. And if we don't get upset with our children when they're learning to talk, why would God get upset with his children when you're learning to talk to him? There is no bad way to do it. In fact, I would say that often children make a better connection with parents in conversation than we do as adults. You love it when they talk to you. And God is the same for us. Listen to Psalm 103 verse 13. The Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who reverence him. So if you're going to develop this spiritual habit, you got to see it as a conversation. You got to realize that you don't have to be on your knees. You don't have to have your head bowed and your eyes closed. Nothing wrong with doing that, okay? Um, you can do it while you're praying. Recognize the opportunities to pray. Have that conversation with God. In fact, I would say that it's better to have that regular conversation with God throughout the day than it is to just say, you know, I'm going to say the Lord's Prayer before I start my day. Talk to God. Here's the second point. Keep it conversational. I'm going to read Matthew 6, verses 5 through 8, a couple uh, uh, verses more uh, from that same passage that I read from the message. But this is from the New Living Translation. Listen to what Jesus said. When you pray, not if you pray, but when you pray, 
Don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on the street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. I tell you the truth, that is all the reward they will ever get. But when you pray, go away by yourself. Shut the door behind you and pray to your father in private. Does that mean you have to crawl into a closet to pray? No. It's talking about making prayer about God, not about you. Okay, it's talking about not trying to be a showboat or a show off or show people how spiritual you are. But rather, Jesus said, then your father who sees everything will reward you. And when you pray, don't babble on as the Gentiles do. They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again. Don't be like them. For your father knows exactly what you need even before you ask for it. So prayer is not showing off spiritually. This is not some contest to see who's the most spiritual. I worked at a church before I moved to Georgia, and it was a very traditional church. It's a very large church, but part of the program, every service, they would call someone to the platform to pray. Sometimes it would just be praying for the service. Sometimes it would be praying for the offering. Often, it was having somewhat, someone to come up and pray for the offering. And I'll remember the people that would come up. Man, it was almost like a Shakespeare contest. You know, the, the fancy words that were used. I was impressed. And I was like, whoa, that's, that's great. And then I'll never forget, a deacon was called to the platform to pray on one service. And uh, they called him to the microphone And here's how he began his prayer for uh, the offering. He said, our dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this food. He started saying the blessing over food. And he caught himself and he, man, he saved it. He said, I mean, this spiritual food that we're about to receive. And I'm like, good save, buddy. Look, you don't have to do that. It's not showing off spiritually. Prayer is personal. It's personal. By the way, if you don't think God already knows what you think, why are you praying anyway? Why would you pray to a God that doesn't even know you? He he knows more than you know about yourself. He knows what you're going to think a year from now. He knows how long you're going to live. He knows when your last breath is on this earth. God knows more about you than you know about yourself And so when I say prayer is personal, don't try to hide your feelings from God. And I've said this, and I say it at the risk of being misunderstood. So I want you to understand when I'm saying this, I'm not suggesting that you should use the wrong kind of language with God or have the wrong attitude with God. What I'm suggesting is if you have never been personal enough with God, that you said some words, at least in your mind, that were not church words, you probably have never truly prayed. Not effective prayers. You say, well, why would you say that? Well, because the Bible has got a book in it. It's called the book of Psalms. And much of that book, you know what they were? They were what are called imprecatory prayers. You know what an imprecatory prayer is? It's praying that God brings violence to your enemy. (laughs) Read it, okay? David, King David, inspired by the Holy Spirit of God, giving us Holy Scripture. He said things like, God, break their jaw. Knock out their teeth. Bring them to an end. Let their plans crush them like a stone. And I'm going to tell you how bad it even got with him and his prayers. He even said this. And once again, this is a different culture. We don't understand it. We don't live in that culture. But he actually prayed these words. He wrote them down as Holy Scripture. He said, even my enemies dash their babies against a rock. Now, I doubt anybody in here has ever prayed that violent of a prayer. But I want to show you what this shows us that if you don't do vertical venting with God, if it's not personal, then you're probably not really experiencing the kind of prayer that God wants to experience with you. 
You ever have a friend that was troubled and you spoke to them? You said, you can share it with me. I'm here for you. Uh, you, can, you can open up and talk with me. And they often say things that they're feeling that maybe aren't true or you don't think that they're true. And they maybe even say things that are like, you know, hurtful to others. But you know what you're doing? You're letting them vent. And I believe that in Scripture, King David, in much of his prayer in the book of Psalms, was vertical venting, venting to God. God, why are you not there? God, why does it seem the heavens are breath? God, why does it seem like you have abandoned me? God, why do you hate me? Now, I'm not suggesting that you turn that into a permanent feeling. Because what David did in every one of those Psalms, read it, he would vertically vent and then he'd come back to his faith. But you, O oh God, are my savior. You, O oh God, are my rock. And you know what he's saying? This is how I feel, but this is what I believe. I believe in spite of my feelings, in spite of my circumstances, I believe in you, O oh God. That's prayer. So recognize it, that you can uh, talk to God. He tells us to ask, and he always answers in accordance to his will and plan. Uh, Jeremiah 33, 3, call to me and I'll answer you and show you marvelous and wonderful things that you can never figure out on your own. That's a part of prayer too. You need to learn that God will give you direction. He said, ask. And because he's a loving father, he always answers. Always. Now you say, well, I've prayed stuff that God didn't answer. Oh, he answered. You just didn't recognize the answer. Um, sometimes he says yes, and sometimes he says no. And sometimes he says wait. Let me get the, the best illustration I can think of of this. My children growing up, every single one of them, without exception, before they turned 16, before they got their driver's license, and most of the time before they were even 10 years old, they asked me if they could drive my car. And you know what I said to them? I'm not going to tell you what I said to them because it's not appropriate for church, all right? So, but the truth is, I answered their request. And I said, no, 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 no. But you know what I eventually said? I eventually said yes. Because every one of them, they turn 16. And sometime between 16 and 17 years old, uh, all, all three of them got their driver's license. So I said yes to them. Now, God does the same thing for us. He would never let us have an answer to prayer that would harm us. Sometimes, because we don't know, uh, prayer could actually harm you. Prayer is a relationship. God tells us to ask him for everything in our lives. And a part of prayer is asking and receiving. But only when we see God as an ATM will we miss out on the greatest aspect of prayer. And that is that God wants to be close to you. But if all you do is say, God, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Nothing wrong praying about your needs. But if you notice in the Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. You know, there are four things that happen before you're, according to Jesus, before you're to ask for your own needs. We acknowledge God, we praise him, we see how great he is, and then we ask for his will to be done. We pray for the church, we pray for his work on earth. And then, give us this day our daily bread. Nothing wrong with asking for your needs to be met. In fact, God encourages us to ask that. But you know what is wrong? If all you see is God as an ATM and you never see how great he is, you never love him, you never praise him, you never ask for his work to be done in the church, in saving people, uh, you never ask for his will for your life. Here's what I know. When you ask for God's will in a prayer, that is the one prayer that God always says yes to. Every time. And the reason is that prayer is a relationship with God. Isaiah 30, verse 18, the Lord waits on you to come to him so he can show you his love and his compassion. 
Prayer is a relationship with God. We've got to pray in faith. We've got to believe that God hears and answers our prayer. Now, I will say this. The most important prayer is the prayer for God to save you. If you have not prayed that prayer, I would encourage you online and in the room. If you've not prayed the prayer to ask God to save you, my challenge to you is to pray that right now. Dear Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I'm asking you to come into my life and to change me. I believe you died on the cross and rose from the grave for my sin so I could be made right with the Heavenly Father. If you'll pray something like that, fill out the next step card, click that online at the bottom of the screen to let us know and we'll help you take your next step. Now, what is your next step? Maybe your next step is the next step class. We do have that next Sunday if you're interested in it. Maybe your next step is getting in small groups. We're just getting those started. Come see us. We'll get you connected. Maybe your next step is getting into a ministry, serving somewhere. We always have needs. And so do you. We talk about the church needing volunteers. You need to serve more than we need you to serve. Because God will use you if you'll ask Him and you'll be available. So whatever your prayer is, I hope you'll begin to establish the regular daily habit of prayer. Last week, I gave you a prayer to pray. And I will hope you'll continue to pray that prayer. Dear Father, I love you today. I give my life for your purpose today. And I thank you for whatever it is. I've got a lot to be thankful for. How many are thankful for Jesus Christ? How many are thankful that he saves How many are thankful that he forgives and justifies us? How many are thankful for family? How many are thankful for friends? Okay. Look, the fact is, we've got a lot to be thankful for. Do we not? Shouldn't be hard to start your day thanking God. Here's what I believe. If you'll do that, your day will start out better. And you'll be better able to handle the circumstances of the day. And my prayer is, once again, you recognize the opportunities to pray. And you develop that as a spiritual habit. Talking to God. Heavenly Father, help us all to talk to you this week. I pray that you bless our church. Thank you for everyone here. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming today. We'll see you next Sunday. We hope the message you heard today encouraged you and strengthened you in your walk with Jesus wherever you are. If you know of someone that could use today's message, be sure to share it with a friend and also hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single message. If you feel led today to give towards the mission and vision, you can do so by clicking the give button on the screen. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.